Okay, now we're going to look at um, algebra of functions, f plus g, f minus g, f times g. We're going to look at how this affects the domains of the functions. We already kind of looked at what happens when we divide, and we're going to talk about that again. Um, we're going to start with looking at these two functions that I've got graphed over here. So I've got this blue function, which is going to be our f. I've got this pink function, which is going to be our g. So the first question is, what is the domain of f? So looking at our blue function, it's kind of hard to see here. That's starting at x equals 2, and the, that blue function continues until x is equal to 12. So between 2 and 12, we've got uh, points on our graph. We've got lines on our graph. That's going to be our domain. So yeah, your domain is your x values. Whatever x values are graphed, we need to show. And we do that using interval notation to show that we're including everything between 2 and 12. Also, we need to use brackets of the endpoints here. Uh, we've got a nice solid line leading up to our endpoint. We've got a nice solid circle here at our endpoint. That indicates that we, we actually do have this value on our graph. And we have a point uh, um, right here. You know, this point 12, 2, right, that ordered pair. Here we have the ordered pair, what, um, 2, negative 1. We actually have a point that's included in our graph. If we didn't have that point included, we would do something like an open circle at one of those endpoints. But since we have a nice closed circle, uh, we do include that in our interval rotation. Uh, we use brackets in our interval rotation. So the domain of G is going to be similar. We need to look at what X values are on here. And we've got X's going from 1, got X's all throughout here, uh, all the way to 10. So again, our interval is 1 to 10. And again, we use brackets because we are actually including those endpoints. Now, next question, f plus g, f minus g, f times g. Uh, when we talk about those domains, we can only combine these functions where they're overlapping. All right, they overlap here in this, in this section. Uh, we don't have any more, uh, we don't have any g. We don't have any of these pink points. We don't have anything past 10 here, so I can't I can't add or subtract once I go past 10. So between 10 and 12, you know, there's nothing to combine here. I can't add, subtract, or multiply the function. Uh, over here on the left, I don't have um, anything for f between 1 and 2. Right, I've got g, but my, my f function has stopped at, at 2. So I can't include this either. I can only go uh, from where they overlap, so I can go from 2 to 10. Oops, and again, I need a bracket. So we call this the, the intersection of these two domains. Right, I've got these two steps, these two sets. I only want the overlapping point. So we've got our individual domains, and we're looking at the place where they overlap in the intersection. Uh, just because there's nothing to add or subtract or multiply outside of that. Now, some, some stipulations, I guess. Um, first off, when we're doing this, we're, we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, etc. We're doing it to the y values. And we're, we're actually going to need, we're actually going to have to use this in just a second. We're going to have to uh, subtract our y values to find our new graph. Uh, the second thing is, in reality, um, if you were a, a lot, there are applications where you could extend your function past this interval, you know, past 2 to 10. And the way that's typically done is for the function that stops, we just say, okay, well, at that point, so at 10, we would say everything past 10 has a, has a function value of 0. That's a, that's a way of getting around these problems. Um, we're not going to really talk about it in this class, but I know when I learned this stuff, it kind of bothered me. I'd be like, what do you mean we can't add them? Just... You know, just take that f value right here. Just take the value of f. 
in, in reality, that's what we do. We kind of like patch up the function. We say, okay, well, we're just going to make g, we're going to make it zero everywhere else. And here, we do the same with f, make it zero everywhere else. And that way, you could add it wherever. All right, back to dividing. What is the domain of f divided by g? So we did this algebraically. We looked at this, and we said, that, you know, you can't divide by zero. That's the same situation here. We can't divide by zero. So looking at my function, um, since we're dividing by g, does g equal zero anywhere? And again, we're looking at the y values. Here we've got g is 5, and it goes down to 1, goes back up to 7, goes down to 5, and then goes down to 1. So g does not equal 0 anywhere. That means we don't have to exclude anything from this domain. Uh, our domain is going to be the same as above, uh, our 2 to 10. So we're starting with that area that these overlap, and we look to see where g equals 0. And in our case, g never equals 0. So we didn't have to exclude anything there. Uh, when we look at g divided by f, we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to check and see where f equals 0. And we see that our function f actually equals 0 right here. Right? It crosses the x-axis. That's where our y value is 0. And that happens when x is 3. And so, we're again, we're starting with our overlapping domain, everything from 2 to 10, but now we're excluding this 3. So I'll go ahead and write this. We're going to do everything between 2 and 3, but this time, since I'm not including 3, I use a parenthesis to indicate that. So everything below 3, everything from 2 to 3, but not including 3. And now, we're going to look at a second interval. So when I'm combining two intervals here, when I'm adding two intervals, uh, I want to use my union sign. I'm taking the union of these two intervals. My second interval is everything above three. So again, I use a parenthesis and then my three to indicate I'm not including the three, just everything above it. I'm going to go from three to ten. Okay. So f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and then f divided by g, or g divided by f, these will all have the same basic interval. And that will, that will always be the case. Your functions will be anywhere you're combining these functions. You're looking for where they overlap. It's just that when you're dividing, you also have to make sure that you're not going to divide by 0. So whatever makes your function, the function you're dividing by 0, well, you have to exclude that x value. All right, uh, lastly, we want to plot our function g minus f. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to look at some x values. We're going to look at all the x's in our domain. We're going to look at the function, the values of g. And then we're going to look at the values of f. And I don't know why we're not writing x anywhere. We're just lazy, I guess. You know, that's one of the things that would have really bothered me as a student. And I hate that I forgot to address it. So we've changed our functions to capital letters. There is no reason to do this or not. This is just an arbitrary decision. You know, we can call our functions whatever we want. I call them J or Q or C or R or whatever. But we've chosen capital F and capital G. Secondly, we, we left off x's everywhere. Again, that was just arbitrary. You know, that was laziness, essentially. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table so you can help, so to help you see this. Uh, I'm going to look at my x values. I want to do everything between 2 and 10. Actually, I'm just going to do the points that are labeled on here. We've got 2. x equals 2. I've got 3. I've got 6, I've got 10. So I'm just going to look at those, those four x values, and I want to find the function values of each. So for g, at 2, my, 
the y value of my g function is 1. At 3, yeah, at 3, the y value of my g function is 7. At 6, the y value of g is 3. And at 10, the y value of g is 1. I want to do the same thing for f. At x equals 2, my y value is negative 1. At x equals 3, my y value is 0. Ah, I remember this trouble at some point. Speaking of which, you may be thinking we excluded that, didn't we? Didn't we exclude x equals 3? Well, we only did that for division. We're dividing g divided by f. But we're not being asked about g divided by f here. Here we're being asked about g minus f. And if you look at g minus f, well, we didn't even list this one here. We could do actually any combination of these functions. Well, g plus f is the same as f plus g. I'll write it anyway. This is kind of a simplified list of functions. I could do any combination of multiplication, addition, subtraction. Um, and my, my domain is still going to be 2 to 10. So I realize we've gone off on a tangent. The important part is we can have an x value of 3 when we're just subtracting our functions. That's fine. All right, so we got kind of off topic. Let's go back here. We were going through our list of x's to find our function values uh, for f in this case. So when x equals 6, the y value of f is 5. And when x equals 10, the y value of f is 2. Okay. So we've got all our function values. Now I can do g minus f. And again, this time, I'm actually, in my chart, I'm writing it with x's there. I don't know why I didn't before, but here I am. Mathematicians are just weird, I guess. So I'm going to do just what it says. I'm going to take the y value for g, I'm going to subtract the y value for f. We'll do 1 minus a negative 1. That's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So I, I'm not going to graph this just yet. Um, at 3, I'm going to be taking 7 and subtracting 0, which is just 7. At 6, I'm going to take 3 and subtract 5, which gives me negative 2. And then at x equals 10, I'm going to do 1 minus 2. So again, I'm just taking the y value of g at 10, and the y value of f at 10, and subtract. So I've got all the y values of my new function. I've got everything I need to plot g minus f. <laughs> With those, I've also got the x value. So if you want to, you can make an ordered pair for each of these. Uh, for my first x value of 2, my y is also 2, so there's an ordered pair. When x was 3, y was 7, so there's another ordered pair, 7. When x was 6, y was negative 2, so 6 and negative 2 is another ordered pair. And then finally, when x is 10, y was negative 1. So there's my last ordered pair. So I can plot all these. So let's see, 2, 2 is right there, 3, 7, right here, 6, negative 2, ooh, we're almost out of room, it's right there, and then 10, negative 1, right there on top of my 10. I'll rewrite 10 up here, just that I <laughs> scribbled it out. Alright, and then I could connect these. get my final function value. And that's a wrap for this.